everybody, this is Joe Workman. And you know what, last night I went on a little coding tangent and um, I decided to revamp Post Office. Um, it needed a, a, a little bit of work and um, so this new version 1.6 is uh, just the bee's knees. Uh, I brought it up, it's really current, and um, I've added a lot of great new features, including Sendy integration. Um, as you know, Post Office integrates with a lot of great services, MailChimp, Aweber, Mad Mimi, um, and now it offers Sendy, uh, which is the newsletter service that I've recently started using. So without further ado, let's jump on in and see some of the awesome new features of Post Office 1.6. So if you are familiar with the previous versions of Post Office, you'll see how fresh and clean and current the new forms are in Post Office 1.6. And as you see, the style options that we have are a lot nicer. Here we have an inline form where it looks like the actual input box and the button are made to be directly right next to each other. As you see, we can also do multi-line forms where we have labels, inline labels inside the individual fields as well as labels that are on top of the input fields as well. As you see, we have a lot of controls over text size, um, size of the input boxes, colors and sizes of everything. Let's jump on in and see exactly how to configure it all. Now, Post Office ships with two stacks. The first is Post Office, which is the one you're going to be using a majority of the time. And the post office box stack, we'll see later on, this allows you to actually trigger actions and display content after a form has been submitted. Now, when you add post office, the first thing you'll notice is you gotta configure your service. Now, post office offers the ability to use your own MySQL database that post office will help set up for you, as well as Mad Mimi, MailChimp, Newsletter Mailer, Aweber, and Sendy. Next up is the form builder. Now here it's really simple to add new fields. If I wanna add a last name field, just simply check it. If I wanna add maybe a custom field or a human test field, I can add that as well. Next we can configure all of the labels for every single uh, input field, as well as provide our human test, as well as the answer for our human test if we're using that field. Now once you configured what fields you want, you're going to want to go ahead and look at form validation and determine whether or not you want to require first name, last name, custom fields, as well as enter in the error text that users will get if they enter in the wrong information. Next up is styling our forms. And we use our text size to actually adjust the actual size of the input fields. So the size of the text basically affects the size of the inputs. Now this uses responsive sizing. So we use 1.5 will give us 1.5 times the root element size. And this will allow the text to actually scale properly um, from mobile device all the way to desktop nicely. Then we can define our text color and that's the color of the text within the each input area. Now by default, our labels are gonna be in line inside the text areas. However, if you uncheck that, you can easily apply um, your own label size and color to the labels as you see they are on top of our form inputs. Next, you'll see that we have full control over the background color of each input, as well as the border color and the border focus. Now the border focus is the color of the border and drop shadow when a specific input field is selected. Now if we were to jump down to the button settings, We'll notice that we have full control over the size of the button, the alignment of the button, whether or not we want round corners or pill-shaped buttons, as well as making maybe we want our button to be full width. And obviously you can change the color and text. Now, if you're using foundation, you'll notice that inside the style dropdown, you have access to all of these styles that are configured inside the foundation site styles stack. Now I had skipped, we have our label options. So obviously the label is the text that is inside of your button. Now the success label is the actual text that the button will change to once your form is successfully submitted. This provides your users feedback that what they submitted actually worked. Now, if you don't like the button that ships with post office, because there are a lot of amazing third party buttons out there. Elixir has a great flat button stack, and there are many more. 
If you want to use those, simply check the Use Third Party Button setting. And what you'll notice is that you'll see a stack drop zone appear. And what you'll notice is a stack drop zone area will appear. And this will allow you to add any button stack that you want inside of here. And whenever you click that button, it will submit the post office form. Now, if we look at the very bottom of post office, we'll see that we have success content. And this allows us to do something after a form has been successfully submitted. But the most simple of the two is definitely redirect. So after a form has been successfully submitted, you can redirect the page to a new URL. Now, I had mentioned the post office box earlier. And what this allows you to do is, when you add a post office box to the page, you can add content. And that content will be hidden. Now, once the form is successfully submitted, you can reveal the contents of that stack. This is great if you want to unveil a download content or maybe um, you know, a free ebook for your customers or something of that nature. Now, there was one setting that I skipped over on purpose, and this was customized sizing. And I wanted to go over this last to show you exactly how we can change the layout of our post office forms. Now, when you open up custom sizing, you'll notice that right away, um, if you have first name and last name uh, checked, you'll see that they are now on one line and the email address field is on the third line. And all of this is configured by configuring the percentage width of each field inside custom sizing. As you see, we have first width and last width set to 50%. Now, because 50 plus 50 is 100, they will both be on the same line. Now, there is also a field gap setting, which allows you to define the gap between each input field if they are directly next to each other. Now, this is exactly how we achieved this one line post office form. By configuring custom sizing, we could actually butt the email address and the button field directly next to each other. So in order to do this, you're gonna to wanna to customize settings, define the, the field size for your email column to be 50% or whatever you like, and then also do the button field setting to be 50% or whatever you'd like. Then lastly, you need to check the inline button setting inside the button styles. And this will allow the button to stay the same exact height as the input field form. Well, and that does it for the new post office update, everybody. I hope you enjoy this update. It really brings a modern flair to post office. Um, and if you're using foundation, it integrates beautifully with it. So I hope you use it. One note, uh, if you are, are updating from an older version of post office, the post office previous versions, will their name will change. Um, and you'll see existing instances be called PO Legacy. And this will be a cute clue that if you wanna use the latest post office features, you're gonna to wanna to add a new post office stack to the page and use that. Now, all your existing instances will continue to work as they did before, but if you'd wanna use the new features of the current 1.6 version of post office, you're gonna to wanna to add a new instance to the page. So I hope you enjoy post office. Um, it's a really great update. Um, I, I kind of built it for myself a little bit uh, because I wanted a, a nicer, fancier form on my website. And I hope you enjoy it too. So thank you very much. I hope you have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm.